quickly to turn their backs on the message. They've turned in arrogance. They reached that highest level of shirk and kufr. <clears throat> and many of the kids might know, and the youth, you'll know about vampires. What happens when the vampire bites you on the neck? You become a vampire. Or the werewolf bites the person, he becomes a werewolf. Iblis, when he takes the person to level one, that person becomes a devil. They become a devil and they live their lives holding people away from the truth. Level two, and it's interesting, is that it's not actually sin, it's actually bid'ah. Bid'ah is level two. And bid'ah is actually, because this, what happens with bid'ah is shaitan will trick a person to thinking that what they're doing is bringing them closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's just one step from committing shirk. And the example of that is the people of Nuh alayhi salam. The people of Nuh alayhi salam, when they said, we'll just build these idols so that it will remind us of these good people, then they died, the next generation that said, we will worship them. So the bid'ah happened, and they thought they were doing good, so they didn't stop it. And so one of the keys actually to getting out of that, that level is to be truthful with Allah and His Messenger, and to follow the Qur'an and Sunnah and never make excuses. Say, what does the Qur'an and Sunnah say? Level three is the major sins. The major sins such as murder, such as zina, and so on. And of the people that shaitan works on the hardest to commit the major sins are the scholars. If he can get a scholar, someone in the public eye, to commit a major sin, then many people will follow that sin after that. And I'll give you this example. Even though he's not a scholar, obviously he's probably from level one. He's been bitten by the vampire. But it's Jimmy Swagger. Jimmy Swagger was a priest, evangelical or something like that, and he was going around and he committed zina. He for, actually, uh, you know, he committed adultery and in Islamic law he should be stoned to death. And then he went on TV and he said, oh God, I've sinned, and he started crying and so on, and then he did it again after that. I ask you, how many people of his followers committed zina on that same night? I'm sure if you had statistics, you would see hundreds if not thousands of people who took that lesson and they said, if he can commit the major sin and he's the priest, he's our leader, then it's okay for us to commit it as well. And we'll go on TV and say, God has forgiven me. Level four are the minor sins. Now we start coming into, if you're a Muslim and you've protected yourself from the major sins, now here's where shaitan is hitting you. You're at level four. And there's actually seven levels and you're at level four. If you're at this level. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us. Level four is the minor sins. Level four is the minor sins. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, <coughs> this hadith is narrated um, in Musnad al-Imam Ahmed, it's a hadith Hassan. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Iyakum wa muhaqqarat al dhunub He said, beware of the sins that people belittle. Like, it's not a big deal. Beware of those sins. The Prophet sallallahu said, for verily the example of people who do that is the example of these people who uh, came upon a valley and the nighttime came and so they had to start a fire. So this guy went and tried, so this is in the desert. This guy tried and got a little piece of wood and this guy got a little piece here and this guy got a little piece here and they kept putting into a pile, 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 pile until they lit the fire and this huge fire went up. <laughs> And then they cook their food. The Prophet ﷺ, the example of the person who commits the minor sins, is this example. The Prophet ﷺ then uh, concluded that hadith. He says, Mata ya'khudu biha sahibuhu tuhliku. That whenever the worker of the minor sins just takes advantage of it and indulges himself or herself in the minor sins, it will destroy them. It will build up and it will burn them alive. Level five. Let's say someone doesn't even do the minor sins. They protect themselves. And by the way, backbiting and so on, those aren't, even, those aren't minor sins. Those are major sins. That's level three. If there's backbiting or riba or something like that, mortgages, whatnot, that's level three. Level four, now we're at level five. Let's say someone's protecting themselves from all of that. Shaitan busies the person in al-mubahat. Or mubah, things that are permissible, but he swamps them impermissible things until it wastes their life away. And I'll give you an example of that.
How many of you like football? This is interesting because for those who are listening in the UK, it's the same thing. They love football too. It's just a different sport. Right? Americans and, and uh, British people. You can football, football. So this guy, he gets season tickets. He follows the sports. He reads the newspaper in the morning. Who won? Who won? After he's coming out of the mess, he's looking on his cell phone to see what were the final scores. I just finished the Isha. And then in Ramadan time, in Taraweeh, in Laylatul Qadr, he's saying, Ya Rabbi, let the Dallas, uh, what are, what's your team called? <laughs> Dallas what? Let the Dallas Cowboy win the Super Bowl. Ya Allah. Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, let the Dallas Cowboys win the Super Bowl. And he's making dua in Ramadan for this. And I know some of you are laughing, but this is a phenomenon that happens with many people. It's not even a joke. That this is what people spend their time. And so by the time this person ends their life, 20 years of their life they've spent sleeping, and probably 20 years of their life they spent indulging in al mubahat indulging to the point where they've wasted their life and they've done nothing of benefit. And I'll give you this example. In Canada, um, in our community in Canada, the people like to play basketball. And I see you have basketball courts out here in the masjid. So everybody encouraged the youth, let us play basketball. Basketball is good because it will lead to Allah and His Messenger. And so everybody's, let's play basketball, let's play basketball, let's play basketball. And I said, you know what, I'm going to go memorize the Qur'an. I went to a Qur'an school, a Darul Uloom school, I studied Qur'an, it took me two years and I finished it. You know when I came back, what do you think they were doing? What are they doing? They're playing basketball. And wallahi, they were like almost in university, they almost got accepted for the varsity team in university, but they didn't. And now they're married, they're older, and on Sundays at the masjid, they can play a pretty good game of hoops. But they know no Qur'an. They know zero. You ask them to lead the prayer, they don't know. Can you recite five surahs? No. Do you know Arabic? No. What have you done with your life? I play basketball. That's at level five. Level six, focusing on less important things. And this is Fadil and Mafdul. You have very virtuous things and you have things that are less virtuous. Things that are less virtuous. Um, <clears throat> I'll give you this example. This is a, like something that's so amazing that I always watch and it always happens. It never fails to happen. You have Tarawih. Okay, tarawih time, and just like I see many people are sitting on, at, on the wall. I'm not dissing you guys or anything like that. But in tarawih time, people go to the walls and sit with their backs. Am I correct? Am I correct? They go to the walls and sit on the back. What do they do on the wall when people from Islam and they look at them in the back like, how could you not pray tarawih? You're in the masjid, you came here, you made wudu, you came into the masjid, and you sat in the back. What are you doing? So the person, he doesn't want to be embarrassed, so he takes out the Qur'an, and he says, I'm following the Imam. How many of you have seen that before? How many of you have seen that? I'm following the Imam in his recital. Since when did you start reading Qur'an and following the Imam with his Qur'an? Only in Ramadan time. Because I want to sit on the back. That is a satanic technique is to take someone from something that's fadil to something that's mafdul. They could read Qur'an anytime they want, but it's a justification to not pray with the jama'ah. And to go one step down, and you know what happens to those guys? While they're following along, someone whispers and says, Psst, shouldn't the lecture finish like at 9.40 or something like that? And then, <laughs> and then that person says, Shh, I'm trying to follow the imam, I'm trying to follow the imam. I'm like, Psst, you want to go outside? I think there's donuts on the table out there. And he's like, donuts. He puts the mushaf on the shelf and he said, I'll just slip out for two minutes. And he's gone. He's outside playing basketball with his friends or so on and he's finished. That's level six. And uh, for those of you who are very focused on the halal meat issue, you are at level six. You are at level six. Why? Because someone will do shirk, they will take riba, they will do, have a girlfriend, they will drink alcohol, but as long as he eats halal meat, it's all good. Al-Fadil wal Mafdul. Level seven. Level seven. Let's just say the person is protecting from all those levels. And there are people like that. Of those people who was protected, all levels, was Amir al Mu'mineen Umar ibn al Khattab radiallahu anhu. The Prophet وسلم, said that every anytime you take a path, O oh, Umar, the shaitan takes a different path. He's like, Oh, Umar's coming, let me get out of the way. So, what level is Umar radiallahu anhu at? He's at level seven. And that is that if shaitan cannot get to you, 